Hello, my name is Pastor Teacher Wayne Estrada, and this is Notes on Life, an online video presentation on how to live your life more successfully based on the principles of the Bible. And I'm Dr. Jeannie Sheffield Estrada, and we want to welcome again our wonderful guest, Apostle Moses Peter from Lagos, Nigeria, and his wonderful church out there called LifeWord Life right. International. Life Word Chapel International. This is our third time to have you, yes, and right. it is such a thrill, and you are going to absolutely love to hear his teachings today. Thank you so much for welcoming me again to this uh, meeting, and I'm so happy to have you and you on this set. And I believe that God is going to bless us together as we discuss on an important topic. That's right, and our topic for today is to talk about why our church is boring and dead. Now, a lot of you have may, or may not be a Christian, or you've gone to church in the past, or maybe just go to church twice a year on Easter and Christmas, and you go like, like, why should I even bother going to church? Because I'm just not getting anything out of it. And you know something? You're right. You're not getting anything out of it. And there are a lot of churches out there around the world and in America that quite frankly aren't worth going to. And yeah. Our topic today is to talk about why that is and what makes a church going to worth going to and why you should seriously consider going to and finding a good gospel Bible believing church. Mm -hmm. You know, I looked up some interesting articles yeah. on that very topic mm -hmm. and one I read is by W.A. Criswell who wrote, mm -hmm. here's the difference between a live church and a dead church. Mm -hmm. A live church allows the Holy Spirit to lead the pastor, mm. and a dead church strictly goes by the sermon. Mm. A live church filled, is filled up with folks who have a, a Bible in their hands. Mm. Mm. Have you been to churches where people don't even have a Bible? That's true. Or they carry the Bible and yeah. just it's just an appendage. Yes, they're walking yes, with yes. the Bible, but they yes. don't really look at it or read it. They don't look at it. Right. They don't read it. Uh -huh. And the pastor doesn't even lead you through the scriptures. Exactly. A live church focuses on opportunities. That's right. And a dead church focuses on problems. Mm. A live church enjoys a loving fellowship. fellowship. And a dead church manifests gossiping and bickering. Now that happens a lot in churches, I'm sorry to say. And that's why you probably think churches are hypocritical, because yes, people yes. act in a way, very ungodly manner. There is no reality. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line. No reality. No reality. So much of phoniness. Phoniness and all of this. Phoniness. Oh, you, know, you know, falseness. Mm -hmm. Trying to put up an appearance that you are not. You, you try to present yourself for who you are not and for what you are not and that's you know uh, mm -hmm. that's painful and a live church majors on strong preaching mm -hmm. and teaching yes and a dead church emphasizes liturgy yeah liturgy oh, in addition to yeah. liturgy also yeah. emphasizes worldly philosophies as yeah. well so a lot of churches now are trying mm -hmm. to appease to the general public by accepting all kinds of worldly principles. Yeah. They talk about saving the planet, which is not a bad thing, but mm -hmm. they talk about that, or they talk about inclusiveness, and that mm -hmm. means a lot of other things to a lot of other That's people. Right. And they're mm -hmm. trying to put out this popularism uh, to their congregations. Yeah. But when you really look at the fruit of the congregation, it's mm -hmm. really not Christ-centered or biblically-centered or, yeah. or growing in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, and, the, and the liturgy also has to do with tradition. Oh, you yes. know, getting hooked up to a particular way of doing something without thinking about if it is effective or not. In the field of management and leadership, you, you, you get to understand that management is about maintaining routine. Mm -hmm. But le leadership goes beyond maintaining routine. You have to be creative. 
You have to find ways of creating results and not just to get used to the old way of doing things and getting the same result all the time. Mm -hmm. And then you see this happening a lot in these kind of churches and the Holy Spirit yes. is left out. It's left out because that's the point. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the church can only be run by the Holy Spirit and when the Holy Spirit is not given his primary place, everything goes bananas. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yes. And a live church evangelizes, but, but check this out. A dead church fossilizes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Fossilizes. You it see fossilizes. That? That's right. Okay. So I want to tell you something. There is a, a really neat story that I discovered on the net. It was a story about an old church up in the north mm -hmm. that started its little church and it really had a zeal for evangelism mm -hmm. and it put out a sign and the sign said jesus only mm. and that church was growing and it was doing fine but what happened was there was a vine that started to grow mm -hmm. on that sign and that sign ended up covering up the je of jesus's name so what did it end up saying mm. us only Mm. Wow. That's, that's right. So that tells us that the church may not have really realized it, but they were going, growing inward that's right. instead of outward. Mm. Mm. That's a very powerful word. That means, mm. that means when you leave Jesus out or when you leave the Jess out, you have the us left. <laughs> and that's <laughs> so, all you got. And that's all you have. So when the church is mind-centered, you lose the essence of the gospel. You lose the essence of God. God has to be put in his rightful place. He has to run his own church because he says, on this rock, I will build my that's church. Right. So he's the builder of the church, not us. Mm -hmm. We need to get the blueprint from him. When Moses walked up the mount to see God, God gave him a blueprint of the tabernacle. You need to have a blueprint. Mm -hmm. Follow in the steps of God. Follow in the steps in the direction that God is giving you. We need to bring God back to the American church. Yes. There's so much of deadness so because much. of over-organization. Over we are over-organized. And the Holy Spirit has been organized out of his church. Mm -hmm. You know, We're not opening up. We want what is, what is reasonable. Mm -hmm. okay? We want what is you know, uh, what, what will rob our minds, you know, what will address our minds and help us to be fashionable and all of that. But the Holy Spirit is not given to fashion. No. <laughs> yes, he's not given to fashion. He is, the Holy Spirit is old fashioned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> one, thing you, one thing you said that caught my mind is that a lot of churches are yeah. into programs. Yes. You know, and a program, pro means towards and grand means to write. So, mm. It depends on what writings you're going towards. Is it the writings of what the Word of God says, or it's the writings of what you think? Yes. Mm -hmm. And so today, a lot of their program churches are program oriented, and they're going off into all kinds of organized directions. Exactly. But not being led by the Word of God or the Spirit of God. Yes. Yeah. And that's what makes the churches dead. So chances are you've probably gone to a dead church where. Mm. There was a liturgy, and it was an, yeah. exactly an hour long, and you walked in, there was a, there, you had a program, mm -hmm. and you went through your program, like, like I just said the word program, yeah, exactly. and you, you went through a, a liturgy of a mm -hmm. program, and at yeah. the end of it you go, well, so mm -hmm. what? What's the, what's the meaning of this? Yeah. yeah, look at even in the book of Revelation chapter 3, verse number 1. Mm -hmm. It says, And unto the angel of the church in Sardis, write, These things said he that had the seven spirits of God, and the seven stars, I know thy works, that thou hast a name. Mm -hmm. The word name is onoma in Greek. That speaks of reputation. You have a reputation. Mm -hmm. Okay? You have a reputation that right. thou livest. For that dead. The sentence of God is that you are dead. Mm -hmm. yes. You have a reputation that you are alive. But the truth of the matter is you are dead mm -hmm. because of the absence of the Spirit of God, mm -hmm. the absence of the authority of God on the pulpit. Because you see the preacher going to the pulpit to tell you his opinion and not toss says the Lord. Mm -hmm. It has to be toss says the Lord. You speak on the authority of the word, not on philosophy, not on pop psychology. 
You know, you have to say the way it is, the way God says it, under the influence and authority of the Holy Spirit. That's how the people come alive. Because they go out there and they hear all kinds of opinions. When they come to the church, they want to hear what God is saying on those opinions. So if you go back to giving them the same opinion, you are creating a dead church. Do you get that? Yes. Yeah, you're creating a dead church. So nobody comes to church to listen to your opinion because everyone has got opinion. Mm -hmm. They want to hear what God is saying. And when they hear it, they want to do it. And that's how change comes. Right. That's Ch how life. Changing our topic slightly, uh, when you look in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, which is really a teaching for another day, yes. it talks about the seven churches that, right. that were written to uh, by Jesus in the book of Revelation. Yeah. The seven churches, in a nutshell, are mm. representation of churches throughout from the time of Christ to the current age. Now, yes. our, the last church is the Church of Laodicea, mm -hmm. and this is a church that the Bible says is a lukewarm church. Yes. Oh. So in addition to churches being dull or boring, mm -hmm. we also have churches that teach things that are not true or not according to what the Word of God is. Now, some yes. of the churches mentioned, we won't go through all seven of them, but exactly. one of them in particular was the Church of Pergamos. That was the mm -hmm. third church that was written to. Mm -hmm. And this particular church was a church that, that emphasized the teachings of Baal and mm. the teachings of sexuality and mm. immorality. Mm. They actively engaged in immorality. Mm. So mm. this is another reason why people are going to some of these churches or maybe they might be turned off by it because they see a hypocrisy yeah. in what's supposed to be Christian and it yeah. really isn't. Mm -hmm. and, and amazingly true, you just mentioned the church of Laodicea. And the word Laodicea is a compound word of Laos and Dikao. Laos speaks of people. Dikao means to rule. So this is a church where it is the rule of the people and not the rule of God. Yeah. That's ah. how you created the church. Uh -huh. It has become institutionalized. Mm -hmm. Man is the one in charge running his thing as if it is his own personal empire and all of that. And so God is not listening to. It's a rule. That's what you have, congregationalism. As a, as a, as a, a church government, congregationalism is the people who rule. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, Jesus, and this is what Revelation 3 3 says go back to what you heard yes. and believed what you believed at first. Exactly. Hold on to it mm -hmm. firmly. That's right. And turn to me again. Mm. Unless you do, I will come upon you suddenly mm. as unexpected as a thief. Mm. Right. And this last church of Laodicea, too, is called the lukewarm church. And Jesus right. says that. I would rather you be hot or cold That's or right. I want to just vomit you out of my mouth. Yes. Today we have a lot of very lukewarm churches. I'm not talking just about dead churches, which yes. are original topics, but we have churches that are just kind of wishy-washy. They don't yes. really stand for anything. They anything. don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. They just want to get money. That's yes. another issue That's in right. and right. of itself. Huh? Yes, yes. Because, yeah, because, because the word lukewarm is another word for it is indifference. Indifference. You don't bother whatever anybody comes with. Every opinion goes, just like he's saying. It's indifferent, it's apathy, it's lethargy. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's just, you know, everybody can come with anything, it's, it, it, it's okay. Okay, so you are no longer passionate about the truth. You're no longer passionate about where Jesus stands in his church. Because if you go back to Revelation chapter 1, the Bible said he was found in the midst of the candlesticks. Mm. In the midst. He has to be in the center. In the center for life to come. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. You know, it says also um, on what we should look for. Well, we're looking for a church that is alive and that recognizes God, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus as his one and only son. Mm -hmm. We look for a church which recognizes Jesus as the true son of God, mm -hmm. a congregation committed to Christ, mm -hmm. a lot of godly people, mm -hmm. a love for God's word, mm -hmm. a love for biblical teaching mm -hmm. and preaching, mm -hmm. a lot of people uh, serving the Lord mm -hmm. and a humble focus on repentance yeah. and sin, mm -hmm. a desire to exist in unity with each other. Amen. I've said these things to you twice, and I'm saying to them to you again, because I want you to really keep this in your mind and in your heart. You're not looking for a superficial church or one that just skims the surface. You're looking for a church that truly loves the Lord. Amen. 
and I hope you're going to spend time looking for that church. Right. And to wrap this up today, no church is perfect. We are all human, mm -hmm. and when you walk into any church, as, even as godly as it may be, there might be little, some problems here or there, mm -hmm. but that's just the nature of the human condition. But that's right. that really gets down to uh, well, how we like to always end our broadcast about if you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. it's your most important decision you're going to make. So. Mm -hmm. If this has touched you in some way, and mm -hmm. God touches people at odd times, this yeah. is not a, an entirely yeah. an evangelistic yeah, exactly. message today, mm -hmm. but perhaps God has been tugging at your heart saying, you know, I really need to start going to church. Mm -hmm. But yes. most important, you need to ask Christ into your heart. So you might want to pray this very simple prayer with me, and that mm -hmm. is this. Lord God, I am a sinner. I've made mistakes in my life. Mm -hmm. Please come into my life. Wash me with your precious blood to wash away my sin, make it whiter than snow. Mm -hmm. And friend, if you prayed that prayer and, and follow Jesus, mm -hmm. you will have your place in glory with him. Right. So, so thank you very much for listening today. We'd like to hold hands and always end our broadcast by saying one big thing, and that is Jesus, Jesus is alive. alive. Amen. 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 Praise Praise God. God. Thank you. Thank you.